The alternate universe. The bizarro world. The twilight zone. When it comes to football, they are all quite real. If only in the mind of Dave Damashek. This is not the NFL. This is the NFL. Here we go, everybody, with the latest edition of the NFL. Today, let's focus on Super Bowl 42 and David Tyree's helmet catch. We now know Eli Manning's floating prayer stuck to Tyree's hat like gum on a shoe, setting up Eli's last-minute game winner to Plexico and ending the Patriots' dreams of an undefeated season. But what if Tyree hadn't made that catch? Well, first off, New England would have become the second team ever to finish with a donut in the L column. But they would have trumped the 72 Dolphins by going 19-0 instead of 17-0. I think we can all agree that that would have been a win for everybody, if only because we wouldn't have to see those geriatric Dolphins popping champagne every year. It also means that the Patriots, as the defending champs, played the Thursday night primetime opener of Odd 8 at home against the rival Colts instead of playing the lowly Chiefs. Significant? Hell to the yes, because that means KC safety Bernard Pollard never hurts Brady's knee. New England makes it back to the Super Bowl, where they're improbably upset by Kurt Warner's cards when Randy Moss can't keep his tippy toes in bounds on a critical play in the end zone. Back to the G-Men. On the heels of their 8-8 eight eight season in Ought 9, they kick Coughlin to the curb after the Meadowlands implosion against Deshaun Jackson and the Eagles late in 2010. Who do they hire? Why, the hottest coach in all the land, Jim Harbaugh, of course. And as a former NFL QB, Harbaugh's excited to begin grooming his rookie signal caller from Washington, Jake Locker, who he got to see up close and personal while coaching Pac-10 rival Stanford. Wait, what about Eli, you ask? Well, the Giants traded him to the 49ers for the number 7 overall pick, which they used on Locker. And speaking of Lockers, the Giants give him Eli's and his number 10 jersey, too. Don't worry about Eli, though. He may not have been able to pull out the Super Bowl against the Pats, but his old coach Coughlin still believes in him, which is nice for Eli, because after the Niners fire Mike Singletary, they hire Coughlin. So now San Francisco has Eli and Coughlin and advance to the NFC title game to face the Saints, who dumped the locker-led Giants the week before. Coughlin gets his Niners to Indy thanks to a fierce pass rush and Eli's dramatic last-second touchdown pass to Vernon Davis. To see who they play, we got to go back to New York for a sec. The Giants weren't exactly the toast of Manhattan after losing in Super Bowl 42. The velvet rope of that club doesn't fly open for Plexico Burris and his teammates in November of Odd 8, and Plex never shoots himself. His leg is fine, but his numbers that season are not. The Giants let him go, so he jets to the Baltimore Ravens. In the 2011 AFC title game in Foxborough, with just 22 seconds left, Joe Flacco lofts a pass to Plex in the end zone. His long arms keep the ball safe from New England DBs looking to break up the play. Super Bowl 46 therefore features the Niners and Ravens, and it's a dandy. As the clock ticks down and the Niners cling to a two-point lead, Peyton feigns a smile as his little brother closes in on his first ring. But the Ravens have other ideas. Baltimore kicker Billy Cundiff boots a miraculous 51-yarder at the gun. The Bay Area weeps, Peyton grins wide, and somewhere up in the sky, even through Indy's dome, Johnny Unitas beams as Baltimore holds the Lombardi high in the house of the Colts. And that's the NFL. This is the NFL.